Hello and welcome to another episode of The Jimney Diaries. This week we are actually starting work on the Jimney. Well, I say work, we're fixing something I've already broken. The aerial. And this is the broken aerial in question. As you can see I have handily zip tied it to the roof rail and put a bit of sellotape around the bit where it broke. Courtesy of me not folding it in properly at a car wash. And these are the tools you'll need for the rather simple job. A radio to listen to, because the one in the car is broken, a screwdriver, a knife, the replacement aerial, some string, and a refreshing soft beverage. So to start with, you'll need a screwdriver, and what you want to do is take out the two screws at either end of the actual aerial mount to the body. Relatively simple. Okay, so screws removed, you should realise the plate now becomes loose, and indeed you have beneath it this little rubber seal as well. Don't lose the rubber seal, that's important for the next step. Now, the next stage takes a bit of fiddling around. What you need to do is reach under the dashboard and find the aerial cable and the plug that it goes into that leads to the back of the stereo. Unplug that and tie the string to it. This is a bit unelegant, to be fair. Now, the reason for the string is so that when you pull the old cable through, the string threads through the channel and it allows you to just then simply feed the new cable back through with a bit of ease, just like a way of flushing it through. Where's the start? So, string now attached, what you can do is slowly start to feed the aerial out of the vehicle. Be careful there are two clips, or well, a zip tie and a clip, that hold the aerial cable in place under the dash. So you may need to sort of feed the cable over those, or perhaps cut the zip tie. Okay, so with the clips undone, you can now actually start to quite easily just pull the aerial out. There we are, and it's starting to feed the string through. There we go. So now you've got the string through, this is an easy guide to tie onto the new aerial cable and pull back through. Look at that. Easy. Now you can see the aerial plug with the string tied to it. Untie the string, but make sure you try and keep this bit out the top of the vehicle so you can pull the new cable through quite easily. And look at that, that is the full aerial assembly right there, including the bit where it broke, and I taped over it with sellotape. Not a permanent fix. 
once you've got the old aerial off, what you need to try and pry off is the little rubber bit at the base of the plastic aerial sort of mount. This rubber seal is what you need to attach your new aerial on, or if you've bought a custom mount like mine, that's what you need. That quite easily just sort of peels off like this. And then loop that down the length of the aerial. Ow. Now, that's the bit you need, the little rubber base. That's what sort of seals the aerial unit against the body. And now we can start unpacking the custom aerial mount and aerial that I bought from a company. It was 3D 4x4. They're based in Israel. This guy shipped it out to me pretty quick. And 3D printed as well, so top job. And there you have it, the 3D printed custom mount for a stubby aerial from 3D 4x4 in Israel. They shipped it over to me pretty quickly and it was relatively well priced actually, cheaper than an original part from Suzuki. And we put the original rubber seal on the bottom there. Cable, I unpacked the cable last night so it had time to straighten out, make feeding it through a bit easier. And now what we've got to do is all the previous stuff backwards. So, aerial tied back on with the string, what you can do is just poke it through into the channel to start it off. It's actually feeding itself quite easily so far. And we have hit a bump, so we can just go to pulling the string. Okay, so about half an hour of swearing because the string broke. Eventually, the new cable is installed under the dash. You have to have fairly slender fingers, however, because you have to sort of reach through to a hole in the firewall and wait for the cable to be sort of pulled through, and you have to try and grab the plug and tease it through. But once you've got it, once you've found the hole, it's easy. It just requires a bit of flexibility in the hand department. Pretty sure my hand is cramping up now quite painful. So the next thing left to do is actually screw down the aerial up top and attach the aerial. So as we can see we've got a little bit of extra cable here but that's okay we can flush that through underneath or sort of drive it down through here and then we'll be able to screw this bit down so if I just don't below. We can see that lines up on there perfectly. With that in place, we just need to put the two screws in. Probably best not to over tighten the screws as it is possibly fairly fragile plastic. Make sure the little rubber o ring goes on here.
and then the actual aerial itself goes on as you can see this bit is considerably smaller than the old steel aerial that I pulled off and we've got a little bit of carbon effect on there I don't know how well the camera will pick that up swish That is now the new aerial in place. Just make sure it's screwed on nice and tight. Let's see if it works. Okay, all the wiring is now done. Everything is plugged in. Everything's looped back through where it's supposed to go. So it's time to see if this works. We've got the ignition on. I've fixed something on the car. Yes, that works. That is a win. What a group, yes. That is how you change the aerial on a Suzuki Jimny.